Yeah. Yeah. Hello, everyone. And this is Vishal. Uh, so today we'll discuss regarding the last week of our MLF. So first of all, yeah. So are you able to hear me? Like, can somebody tell me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So have you went through the lectures of last week? And there was a session with Harish sir also. How was that? Have you went through the lectures or not? Like, I guess day after tomorrow is the submission, right? Not yet, sir. Okay. Mm, okay. So, you can go through the lectures once, I guess. Uh, in the 12th lectures, there are some like concept or you can say the modeling part that may like. In the problems, you can't like we can't give you those type of like we can't convert those into some problems uh, regarding those concept. But the thing is that will help you a lot in the upcoming like uh, uh, courses and all. Or maybe in the part whenever you'll go and you'll like work on some algorithm. Like there was clustering algorithm was discussed in last week, and there's like. Every time the algorithm generally changes after, like in the ML, every six month or seven month, there will be a new uh, algo that will become very famous. Like here also in the clustering, whatever I has discussed, like the ML model, the expectation maximization model, it's a simply upgradation of the K means uh, unsupervised clustering model. Okay, maybe uh, some of you would be knowing regarding the K means clustering model. So that's just a upgradation. Like earlier, we used to use the k means uh, clustering model expectation maximization is also a very good model to like for the clustering for the grouping of the data so have you like went through that are you able to understand that like clustering model or not like there are not much questions that can be asked regarding that like can ask you uh, uh, if there is a viva only then can i can ask you but in a like mathematical term it's very difficult to project that in a question so, but have you went through, like, have you understood the clustering part, like how we are doing that, how we are generally able to uh, model those sort of things? Any of you can say regarding the, what you have got from the like clustering model we have been discussed in the last lecture regarding the, what you can say the GMA model, <laughs> expectation maximization clustering method model. Any of you can yeah. okay. so if you are not replying okay. So what should I do? Guys? Clustering basically is that if we have joint densities of multiple random variables and uh, we find out the probability that a certain variable falls in that particular cluster. Hmm. Yeah, this is the one way to do that. Okay, like yeah. I'll tell you, see, uh, if I'm having, you're, you're just uh, joint distribution and all uh, leave for a second. You just have the data set has been given with D dimension. Okay, you are having some sort of data set, like I'm having data set of some patient, like I'm having the MRI data set, MRI, and that MRI consists of, like you can say, uh, like I've done some of the data processing sort of things on the MRI and from that MRI, I took out some like hundred, a hundred set of features from one MRI. I'm just telling about the features like in the hour, like MRI can be of the whole body, but generally if I'm having some patient who is suffering from some sort of Alzheimer or mild cognitive or mild cognitive sort of thing. So I'm just featuring, I'm taking out some features like hundred features out of our like MRI, I'm having MRI, I'm taking out the hundred features. And for each features I'll be having, I've converted those in some mathematical like numbers. So for each of the data or each of the features, I'll be having uh, N numbers. Like if I'm having thousand of the thousand patients MRI, uh, MRI of thousand patients, which consists of like a uh, normal patient also. And mild in cognitive is simply like, if you would have seen one movie black, okay, in that, the words like Amitabh Bachchan or somebody is having that uh, 
disease alzheimer okay now it is it's very co uh, common that alzheimer uh, disease so that is a like the last phase uh, the second phase is simply the mild cognitive uh, uh, like this uh, the second phase but if i am having a data set like having a features 100 features i have taken out like every part like for example gray matter volume for gray matter volume for each of the page like each of us will be having a different gray matter, uh, matter volume okay and depends on the uh, like this is the one feature gray matter that can be a white matter uh, i don't know white matter generally happens or not but gray matters that i know is a one feature uh, in our uh, mind uh, in our uh, brain okay so that is a one feature similarly like that we are, if we are having 100 features and that for each of the features i am having 1000 for the 1000 patient 1000 value be there and each of them would be a normal distribution that is pretty like uh, that is very pretty that uh, each of the uh, distribution each of the uh, features will be having a normal sort of uh, distribution okay then if i am having all those like d features with 1000 with each of the d features having 1000 uh, like uh, number uh, with for the each of the patient uh, and for that if i have to if you have been told to generate a model such that you have to group those thousand people in three category like one is normal the patient with uh, the, the uh, patient who has came and has done the mri but he's normal and one is the stage first of the alzheimer that is mild in cognitive and the second phase is the alzheimer patient now you have to group those things okay so in those things generally we can use this expectation uh what you can say that maximization there's a one one method to cluster uh things there are some other methods also like uh, maybe you'll read in the next uh, uh, courses and all the key mean k mean is the pretty like the basic one generally how i'll tell you how generally we do in the, how generally we group in the k mean uh, and g gmm or you can say the expectation maximization is the next version of of uh, clustering the model have you got the point like a brief things of what we are doing trying to do here Yes, sir. Yeah. Or should I write for some? Okay, I'll show you one like uh, one screenshot I'm having. I just took it from some YouTube video itself. Mm, okay, I'll just share my screen. First, I'll tell you how, 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 like in the lecture, how Sir has discussed regarding this model. Then I will tell you regarding the K-mean. Okay, I will tell you first the one method of clustering the model. Like K-mean is the one method. Okay, so what generally happens? I'm just, just giving you a brief idea so that you'll be maybe many of you have not seen the lectures or maybe after seeing the lecture, if you are not getting what we are doing exactly. Okay, so generally in the clustering, what we do? If I'm having some sort of two features like F1 and F2. Are you able to see my screen, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So I'm having some sort of features one and feature two. And a feature one is having some sort of values like, for example, 100. And this is 60. This is 45. This is 90. Some sort of values. All values are there. 65, 95, 45. 69 some sort of values i'm having okay so this can be plotted like if i'm having only two features this can be plotted on x and y graph like on the d like two dimensional uh what you can say cartesian plane this we can plot right so what happens in uh because this is unsupervised sort of things i'm not having the we have not been told regarding the grouping pattern okay you have been just given like i'm I've given you four like we are having thousands of the data set okay with the two features and you have been just told regarding 
if without any information you have been told to group those features like group those not features group those data set okay so sort of thing uh, i'm just representing like this 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 uh, was one set of data set and this was the other set of data set right this we were not knowing earlier we have been just given the features and this, this after plotting you can see this is the to to like cluster okay that we have to know regarding how many clusters are there or you can say uh, yeah how many clusters are there so what what we can do with the in the k min generally what happens this is the simple this is the first stage of unsupervised learning not first step like in the clustering generally we this is the basic k means what what generally do in k means for example we have just taken uh, we have like for example have we hyperparameters are there like maybe uh, most of you would be knowing regarding the hy hyperparameter you already know right and maybe in the first week i have discussed regarding the hyperparameter so i have just fixed that hyperparameter and k is the hyperparameter here k means how many clusters are there so i have just fixed it to two that we can uh, vary also like with the varying like with the we can take the k as 3 4 5 6 whatever you want to take you can take and then regarding those things there are some tools with that you can see whether which of the hyperparameters is the best one okay like for example i have just taken two as a hyperparameter that means i have i am from the starting i am uh, taking two as a key this data set i have to group in two uh, cluster okay now i have taken k equals to two here now what i am doing i have just taken this as a centroid one and this as a centroid two okay for example this this was the uh, this, this this i took as centroid one and this it's a i've taken centroid two or you can say i've taken this as a centroid two okay so what it will do this algorithm generally what it does it will see it will uh, this came in generally works on the distance thing it will calculate the distance of the this point okay this next point it will calculate the distance from c1 and it calculate from the c2 it will see with which one the distance can be euclidean distance okay so it will calculate the distance from this point and it will see if it this centroid one or cent which one is the closer whichever is the closer to that uh, this point it will go to this centroid okay and then it will upgrade its all values right it will upgrade the centroid value now so now we are having x1 as this x2 as this y1 as this and y1 y2 as this so it will upgrade everything so now c1 will be having two points right and c1 will be having one point so similarly for each of the points it for all the other points it will calculate the distance and it will whichever which is the closer okay it will go to that centroid it will go to that cluster and it will upgrade each and everything of that cluster okay and after uh, upgrading all the things and then we'll let uh, we'll know we'll uh, see that okay this has been classified as one and this has been classified as the other group okay like for example i have taken just 10 point from this itself you know uh, come to know ki okay, out of this out of this i am having like five more points out of this like this was k1 this is k2 this is k3 this is k4 and this is k5 so we came to know okay k1 k2 and k3 belongs to this centroid one and k4 and k5 belongs to centroid five that is generally calculated on the basis of distance and after calculating distance it will come to know ki okay uh, yeah and one more thing after upgrading after coming to know ki this point belongs to c1 it will upgrade the centroid each and every time after upgrading that it will like each and every step it will updating itself so that in the final version it will having the all the group of data set which are very much closer to that centroid okay and this centroid you can take any value okay because the centroid is also upgrading itself in each of the steps right so this was a k mean this is the simple version of whatever we have discussed now what are been expectation maximization an expectation maximization we are having the gmm model gmm model you already know if i am having two three peaks right so this is a mixture of three or four gaussian uh, or normal distribution so if i am having three peaks right So what happens? Many a times, what happens? Like for example, I am having this as a z normal n one, and there can be one plot. This is n two, right? For example, so here in expectation maximization, generally we calculate the uh, cluster responsibility or the probability such that it belongs to which, like 
we have to calculate the probability so that it will, uh, it will belong to which of the like if i'm having three of the normal distribution which normal distribution will belong like i'm having one data set so like for example this data set this 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 point i'm taking this point uh, this same uh, yeah so i'm taking this point this is x1 this is a one data set okay so uh, if you'll calculate the probability from the n1 so it has the this data set is having a good like cluster responsibility or you can say the probability of going to the n2 normal distribution right like we have did in the k-min what we are doing we are just upgrading the centroid we are taking calculating the distance here we are calculating the probability value okay and with the calculating the probability value we came to know okay, okay this belongs to n2 this is a higher probability of belonging to n2 and as it will belong now will what we'll do this it will uh, this in the n2 here also uh, what we are doing we are just taking out the two cluster okay this data set will be having fixing the hyperparameter to the two okay this will be having a two uh, what you can say the clusters and each of the cluster will be seeing okay this point is belonging to this cluster and again with the each and every uh, uh, values we'll see which this uh, which of the data sets generally has a good probability or get a probability to go in which of the clusters and according to that for each of the data set after each of the data set like this data set will belong to one cluster after getting this we'll upgrade each and everything like we will uh, will upgrade new k will upgrade the psi or and we'll upgrade the again the responsibility things so every time we'll uh, upgrade each and uh, every what you can say the parameter because uh, like in the similar way as we were doing in the k min clustering so we were up each and whenever the one new data set was coming we were upgrading the parameter uh, parametric like values similarly here also we are upgrading the parametric value and if, after upgrading the parametric value then we'll come to know okay, okay this cluster uh, but like will come at a end so that after like uh, doing for the m step like m can be a very large we'll come to a conclusion that this was having this can be classified in two clusters and like classified in two clusters and this cluster is shown as as follows like i'll i'll show one uh, screenshot or what you can say okay there is that uh, Like for example, this is the simple like to uh, this is the data set I'm having that is the X generally represents. This is a data set of the normal patient and as well as the is having some anemia as a disease. So it can be a normal patient. Like you can see there's a bunch of like bunch of data sets which are here. Like you can see the cursor, right? So these are the data sets, and here is a bunch of data sets. So it's generally you can from the plotting of the data set or the scatter plot you can you can easily identify that is having a two clusters right so what you can do uh now i'm just taking okay i'll have to in the starting you can just consider okay uh, i have to take the hyperparameter k as two okay now what you will do so i'm having the data set this was two data set. okay yeah so this was the first step uh this was the our data set so what happened the next step we have just taken we have just considered k, this data set will uh, just considered k as 2 that means we have taken a hyper parameter 2 we have classified all this data set into 2 in the starting what happened in the starting this has taken us almost similar uh what you can say the almost similar set of data sets in here almost similar like group or the cluster it has created in the starting so in the starting we can create um, almost similar with the centroid was a bit different for here like the green one is having a bit different cluster and the uh, and centroid and the red one is having a bit different centroid but what i mean the because uh, now in the next step when we'll do the next step like right, we'll we have to do an we have to go through the algorithm for n number of times. So what I mean, the next step, uh, if you are doing, 
so for each of like for example here so for these points like i'm showing you is that cursor yeah for these points you can see this points this all points will go to this cluster because the probability of this points going to this cluster will be a higher compared to this points going to uh, like the compared to this points going to this green cluster right so the this this point which are very much closer to the red cluster will be having a good probability or a higher probability to go to this red uh, cluster as compared to the green one right similarly for this this points the probability of this point going to this green cluster will be a very high right so in the next step what happens so whichever the points will be having a very high probability of going to that red cluster will come under those uh, cluster right so now we'll be having for each and every step whenever the new point will come the mean value will uh, change right mu value will change the variance will change everything will get updated so for each and every step like for the starting we were not having uh, the in the starting that just calculate the probability for some of the values and as the values or as the data set were coming inside each of the uh, clusters it was changing it's changed and in the end what happened in the like m step or we have taken like for example thousand step we have to and after that thousand step we have came to a conclusion that now this cluster has been classified into two uh, uh, cluster one is this one and the other is this one so but this will not tell you regarding which one is normal and which one is having the uh, which one is abnormal it will just classify those into two data set okay maybe uh, this will clarify you uh, what do you can say it'll get a bit chunk of things was it uh, clear like is it clear now Okay, so anybody else is having any doubt in that in this week content, or should I go through the activity or practice question? Can somebody say something? What should we do? Because somebody was saying in the last meet we were having some told the live sessions, the number of live sessions are very less. So, but if we are coming the live session, nobody is picking anything. There is no sense of doing this, right? Sir, uh, hello, sir. Yeah. Yeah, sir. Uh, so, no, sir. I don't think the live session for this uh, for this uh, MLF uh, subject is less. Uh, it's enough. Uh, uh, and sir, uh, one another thing, sir, I have a doubt in practice assignment. Uh, so should I say that now or uh, will you do do it later? Yeah, I'll, I'll do it now itself. Yeah, okay, I'll go through that. And one more thing, so on the discourse, if somebody is not answering, you can tag me. But the one thing I've seen, there are so many new threads. So like whenever I open the discourse, there are so many new threads. I don't know why, maybe for the bonus marks, many of like the persons is just creating a new thread. Yes, uh, but, sir. I, I also think mainly for the bonus marks because yeah, in, the, so in that case, what happens? The person is asking, I can't see the, those questions. So I can see the whole, a lot of like uh, threads you used to go each and every, but I can miss some, some, right. But I don't know if, if the doubts, if nobody's responding, you can tag me there. Or you can mail me also, like my mail ID is already there, salad that it online degree. You can mail me. Or uh, for the next time, I would uh, request you to uh, request the administration team to give some marks based on the time spent in the discourse. Like, uh, so it happens mostly what happens, like we go to the discourse and look for the answers first. Then, if I find the answer, then I don't create a thread, of course. But, yeah, uh, and nobody is finding also. The thing is, nobody is finding. Like the same question has been answered so many times, and again the new thread I can see. 
and then I I have to go again and check where I have answered and then I have to tag. So, but uh, like the students can like you can do right. You can just search and the question number you have to search will get the answer. I guess most of the so answer. There, so there are many questions which have been already answered in the last term also. So yeah, yeah. So even and, though uh, that is accessible right now. Yeah, that is accessible. Uh, yeah, and I've I've been answering it like. I can see so so many same question. I'm repeating same again and again. It's coming, and there are like and there were some issue regarding the week six also. Like there were some error. So that has been corrected. You can go through once more if you are having any of like you can see if there is a correction needed anywhere. You can uh, like say on the discourses anywhere so that it can be corrected again. Because I have corrected all the things like regarding week six and eight. There were were some errors regarding the eigen. Values and all that I have corrected all. Okay, so I'll go through the practice practice of week twelve itself, right? Sir, is it possible to go through the summary of the lectures? Okay, I'll go through that first. I'll go through the practice uh, questions if somebody is asking. Yes, sir. Uh, week twelve, sir. Practice assignment question number. Yeah, one guy is asking. Naveen is asking the upgradation of the cent up, up, upgrading of centroid. Each time will take too much time. It will not take too much of time. Like randomly, if you do, it will take a lot of time. But normally in the algorithm, you will uh, like run. It will not take much time to do this. Like the complexity is not that bad in here, so it won't take much time to do that. But normally, you can if you are thinking. Each and every time it will upgrade the centroid manually. If you do, it will take. But for uh, ML algorithm, it won't take much time to do this. So yeah, okay. Uh, which which uh, practice assignment question? Yes, sir. Uh, question number two. Okay, question number two, right? One second, sir. One second. Yes, sir. Question number two. Yes, sir. question number two. Okay, this one, right? Yeah, there was an error uh, regarding this. Point five earlier it was given. Now it has been updated to point one uh, six. Okay. No, actually, sir. Uh, uh, the thing is, uh, so uh, uh, when I am uh, using the Cherishev inequality, so the uh, formula for Cherishev inequality is x minus mu mod of x minus mu greater than, say, let's say any constant c. Uh, yeah. Give me a upper bound of uh, sigma square that is variance by c square. Yeah. So see here, uh, this this is the question, right? So you have to calculate. Hey, your what? screen is not visible. Okay. 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 Sorry. 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 Okay. You can see now, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what you have to do, you have to calculate here uh, the probability such that x is greater than or equal to alpha n, right? Mm -hmm. So both the side what we did, we have just subtracted a term n p. So yeah. that will not make any difference, right? No, sir. No. Okay. So now you can use the Chebyshev inequality. Chebyshev in that Chebyshev inequality. Uh, this this uh, how we can how generally we calculate in Chebyshev if we are having x mod of x minus nu. Or that is than actually uh, x will be less than t plus. Uh, that is the upper bound. Uh, upper limit is t plus uh, mu and lower limit is uh, t minus mu. Mm, uh, see this 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 is the equation right? Yes. The, so what generally you have to do? You have to calculate the variance of this uh, variance of this x, right? So what is the Chebyshev inequality? Generally, you write. Mm -hmm. How generally you write Chebyshev inequality? If you are having some sort of like probability of x minus mu. Greater than equal to some sort of t, then you generally write it as variance of x upon t square, right? Yes, sir. So here the t is what alpha n minus n p, and variance of x upon 
alpha n minus n p ka whole square right okay sir so this is what this is less than equal to variance of x upon alpha n minus n p ka whole square right yes sir and variance of x how you calculate this is a binomial so for the binomial we generally get the np uh, q generally we get and np we generally get for the expectation and this is the variance right yes sir yes so the variance expectation is what np q yes sir i understood sir yeah and this from here you can get n square and this is alpha minus p ka whole square so n will get cancelled so we'll be having this as a value p q upon n alpha minus p you can put the value of Uh, p q n alpha p and you'll get uh, you'll get around uh, some sort of like two eighty eight upon two twenty five n you'll get and n you have to put like here it the n was what n was uh, what is the value of n here n eight is there so you'll uh, have to put yeah uh, yes sir I I got it sir I actually solved it but uh, I think I made some mistake but uh one thing sir like uh, can you go to the another uh, that uh, yes sir here yeah. uh, so here uh, when i am doing that mod you know like h yeah. minus np uh, that mod part so that will give me a different limit no sir i mean uh, like here it is also i can see that uh, x minus np mod of x minus np is greater than n um, alpha minus np so okay what you are asking like what you are asking that if i am uh, uh, taking this mod yes 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 okay but the that will not affect the upper bound right uh, it will affect the exact probability if if somebody has told you to calculate the probability of mod x equals to some sort of things like greater than equal to t then it will be from here this probability this area plus this area right mm -hmm. yes sir yes sir But it will not affect the upper bound of that. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yes, yes. Yeah. But if you have to calculate the exact sort of things, then it will affect. Then you have to divide it by one upon. But uh, one thing, sir, like uh, uh, so, here when I am uh, before doing the mod, so hmm. I uh, let's say I am starting with p of a greater than equal to t. Okay. now hmm. i am just subtracting mu from both the sides like yeah. uh, x, x minus mu is greater than equal to t minus mu i am doing that now when i am giving the mod on both side yeah so that will uh, mean like if i if i take out the mod let's say mod is there and i take to uh, take it out like i remove the mod then that will give me a limit which has a upper bound and a lower bound for x Yeah, yeah. So when I am inserting the mod, that will not change anything, right? That will not change. Uh, that will not affect the upper bound. Yeah, got it. Okay. Okay, sir, I understood. And uh, one another question, sir. Question number. Uh, uh, question number. The maximum likelihood question. Question number seven, sir. Yeah, which question? Question number question number seven, sir. For maximum likelihood, I actually solved it, but uh... yeah. So here, uh, see, for, this is asking for a sample of unit size. Okay, so you don't have to multiply n number of times. So whenever you'll be have likelihood, likelihood, uh, you'll be writing. You'll be having the likelihood of only because the sample is only we have got only one sample, right? Okay. right so so then we are then understood sir what you were trying to say so we have to take only one unit yeah and then you have to differentiate it differentiate so we don't have to take the log of uh, uh, both side also because we were yeah log will help you see if you are having see what generally why we generally take log log generally help us to calculate to simplify those things log is not giving uh, doing anything because log is a what you can say monotonic function so it will not affect if the function is increasing in log also it will increase right yes. so log generally is not helping us 
in any other way it's just helping us to conclude some uh, result right while we have to, as we have to maximize or minimize some sort of things log is just helping us so that if the sum of the parts is in multiply it will get in addition and we can differentiate uh, sim sim in a simpler way that is why generally we use log log is not helping in other uh, way that that is uh, so you can use the log uh, every time if you have to calculate some sort of maxima and minima so Have you got the point? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So you can just take the one likelihood function and that likelihood function. You can take the log and then you can maximize. And you have to take the value of theta for that. So you have to solve this optimization problem such that you have to get. Uh, generally, you have to get that theta value. Like if I am having some sort of function. So if this for this function you have to maximize. Okay. So for this function you'll be having two values, right? This is the value. at which the function is maximizing so this is what we have to calculate this we don't have to calculate so the theta we have to calculate at which the function is maxima so yes. you have to solve that max optimization problem for which theta is uh, maximum that's it yes so so here we'll have minus 2 by theta plus the, uh, 1 by theta minus x equal to 0 and we equate it and get theta equal to 2x is it yeah and uh, the only difference here we did is that we didn't take the product right sir i mean generally for l theta we take the product of all the densities yeah. here we took only one yeah because every time we have to write likelihood function right yeah, for the yes. likelihood function if i'm having n n data then only we'll be having n n sort of like we can probability value yeah. right but here we are taking only n is equal to 1 only one uh, data point right yeah. so if i am taking only one data point so at that data point only i have to take the likelihood function right okay so if i am taking n equals to 2 so for two values i have to take likelihood function and then multiply but i am having only n equals to 1 so i am having a likelihood function for a one data point only so that's why i have written like this and just have to take the log and differentiate it you'll get this and uh, sir uh, one another thing like uh, we never we are doing a normal yeah. distribution where uh, my expectation and variance are in matrix so how does that work i mean uh, i have seen for scalar but for matrix how does that work see uh, whatever we have read here here uh, see I, i've told you right if i'm having feature f1 right i'm having feature f2 and f1 is having a normal distribution f2 is also having a normal distribution right so for example f1 is the features of height of peoples and is the weight of peoples right so you already know that if i am taking a sample of 1000 peoples from our whole country yes sir so that height will be in the normal distribution are you agreeing with me right yes yes sir yes sir right yes, sir. so this is a normal distribution this is also a normal distribution so this is how we generally work like we are having all the features in the normal distribution set right mm -hmm. this is how we generally works every time in the modeling of some sort of algorithm and all so all this data set are in the normal form only so what here sir did he has proven everything ki how generally it works if i am having a data. see in the 11th week you would have read about the transformation right mm -hmm. yes sir transformation of the data set i am having if i am having x as the uniform data set 0 comma 1 y is in the form of uniform 0 comma 1 right so if i am having if i have to get the transform data like random variable like for example this is the hidden data set this is the hidden what you can say features these are the hidden features like for example we have to calculate for the electricity if i have to get the value to electricity is generally what summation or the subtraction of the electron value so the electron here is uh, minimized or the hidden part right but we generally take care of the elect like electricity right so electricity is what like if you have to calculate the ampere in the form so it will also come in the form of some normal distribution but electron is also is in the form of normal distribution the number of electrons and the subtraction or the addition of the electrons right so these are the hidden what you can say the uh, features but with the help of these features we are getting some sort of electricity right so this is what we are seeing but the hidden part we are not seeing right so here also in the 11th week we have discussed x and y so x and y was having the uniform distribution and with that uniform distribution we get to know regarding some sort of uh, other uh, what you can say the transform data set like z where f uh, z was the combination like 
one was what you can say a was the combination of x plus y and b was the combination of x minus y okay yes sir and then we have to get the uh, what you can say the joint uh, distribution of in the form of a and b so what we generally did we take everything uh, in the form of x and y and then we take the we calculate the jacobian distribution right so here also we are doing the same thing but uh, here it, it become bit complicated because we are in spite of the uniform distribution we are taking normal distribution every time because it's very common the normal distribution every time we will go through that uh, on the data set will be a, almost a, a normal dis, uh, distribution right so yes. the same way we are doing the same thing we are having the normal distribution n normal distribution and from that n normal distribution we have taken out some sort of values like some sort of combination of this normal distribution and for those combination we have to take the uh, what you can say the joint real distribution in the form of x and y and how generally we come to an conclusion like we have to calculate the jacobian of what jacobian of that uh, what you can say the uh, uh, that matrix we are getting right the matrix a matrix that gen generally we get right? and, uh, covariance uh, inversion yeah inverted matrix yes yeah these all uh, you'll see in the upcoming what you can say courses or when you will go through some sort of what you can say uh, if you'll read the mathematical part of some of the algorithm you'll go through this it will not what you can say it, uh, if you are somebody is developing the algorithm then it will help but if somebody has to just use the uh, data set and all so there are all the all the what you can say the library and all so these all things will not come to your mind when you will be working but somebody has used this all concept to model those library or alg algorithm yes sir i mean we have to understand uh, those models i mean not hmm. at least the fullest but to some bit uh, to understand what is happening yes sir. So the, this kind of uh, normal distribution, like whenever I am using a matrix uh, instead of a scalar, so uh, then the graph we used to see in uh, statistics too, that graph will be transformed into two-dimensional or three-dimensional based on the, um, I mean, based on the rows of the matrix, right? Yeah. So like you have go went through the GMA model, right? The GMA model we have two, three normal distribution. Like with three, four yes, peaks, right? Yes, yes, yes. This is the one model, like with the this is the combination of three, four normal distributions. So combination in the sense, like, uh, so if I add two normal distribution, then it is uh, acting like a single normal distribution with um, their mean just getting added. That is happening. So yeah, see, if we are having normal, this is a combination that doesn't mean we are just adding the normal distribution. Okay. Yeah, this is a different sort of things like sort of told you regarding that thing. Like I'm having this sort of the person who's having some sort of disease. This is a some sort of person having some sort of disease uh, or not the disease or he has given you a beautiful example of like, if a, like uh, this, this was a, a part chunk of people who is selecting A as an option have got this marks like and this chunk of student who has got the B who is just marking B this chunk of people or the student is marking C as an answer and this chunk of people is marking D as an option. And whenever he's um, marking D as an option, he is getting some sort of mean, uh, uh, some sort of marks with five marks he's getting with some variance, right? And similarly, the person who is marking just C as an answer, he's getting some sort of normal distribution with some, uh, 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 what you can say, marks as three with some sort of variance, other variance like Two or zero point five, some sort of things like that. And if we'll calculate the area, because this is the whole student, right? So the area under this GMA model should come as a one, right? Because it's a combination of three, four uh, normal distribution. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sir, I have a problem in question number nine as well. Okay, I'll go through that. Okay, so here we have to calculate find the like, likelihood my, uh, maximum MLE for the parameter P for a binomial MP, okay, for the sample X1 to Xn. So this will be similarly some summation of all the data set upon Mn. Okay, so what's the issue here? Like we have, we can write this likelihood function, right? Here. Yeah, this likelihood I wrote, sir. After that, I couldn't find out how to actually come up to that uh, P value. Okay. So here I'm having. 
So if we'll take the log of this, so log of this will be what? We'll be having M. This C we can remove because this is a constant, right? So if we'll take log of this. If we'll take log of this, so we'll be having log of M, right? Log of C can be removed because this is a constant that will not affect and because after taking the, 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 the derivative, we'll be getting uh, the derivative of constant as zero, right? So plus log of P. Uh, what but even M would be a constant, right? Because we're derivating with respect to P. Hmm. M is what? M is here the parameter. Uh, okay, M is the number. Yeah, NP. It is like NP. Uh, yeah, M is the number of uh, that. Uh, what you can say the uh, binomial, uh, the Bernoulli. M is the number. Uh, number of, of random variables, right? So number, yeah, number of, of yeah. random variables, or we can say the Bernoulli trial. Yeah. Doing. And P is number the of probability. Trials, yeah. P is the probability. Okay. So yeah. Okay, one I'll take this. Okay, I'll I'll consider everything now. But yeah, you're correct. If M should get ready, like M log M. Okay, I'll take everything now. But M will also if we'll differentiate M will also get exhausted. And C X I is this. So this all term is constant. Then we are having summation of x i log p, right? And then we'll be having m minus summation of x i log p, right? So this term is will get exhausted. Now we'll be having summation of x i upon p, one upon p, right? Into one. And this will be in the summation form. So this plus M, M minus summation of XI again, upon what, uh, upon one minus P into minus one. So minus one will get here. So it will be zero, right? So now we'll be having summation of XI upon P equals to M minus summation of XI upon one minus P. So if we'll just cross multiply it, we'll get summation of XI minus P summation of X I equals to M P minus summation of X I, right? Uh, sorry, P times this. So it is getting canceled. How is this? Mm -hmm. P is getting summation of X I upon M. Okay, one thing. I'm um, are you doing any like mistake here? Can you see that? Whether we are doing any mistakes here or is it correct? I also couldn't get the answer. That's the reason I asked sir, because okay. the answer given I couldn't get. Whether we are doing any mistake. Uh... Then... Okay, so we have started with this summation of this, is the correct likelihood function. Uh, yeah, M out of M, it's C is uh, correct. Then P to the power of uh, X I, this is correct. One minus P M I. So till here it's fine. So now we can take the log and if we are taking the log, so this all will get canceled. Okay, this was already can because this was MCX now. So this is already a constant. So this will get constant. No worries about that. So now we'll be having summation of XI log P. Right. So and yeah, this is fine. M minus summation of this. This is also fine. One minus P. When we'll take the differentiate, this will come summation of XI. And this will come. And okay, this is also fine. 
thân tên ok tâm yeah and then we are having this as uh, summation of xi upon p minus this and so we'll just move it here and now we'll be having summation of xi uh, into 1 minus t okay correct mp minus so will this will get cancelled so this should be the value of summation of xi and sample and i think Sir, are they using n for that summation xi or something? I don't know because the answer is sigma xi by mn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, and summation xn. This is what we are getting, and I think so. The answer should be this only. From where we are getting n, n is the this okay sample number is n and the binomial trial we are doing for m times that is also fine so when we are writing okay so i'll i'll do it once more and then we'll see if whether we are getting or not otherwise uh, tomorrow also we have a session we'll I'll check it once um, i'll do it once more sir uh, i mean can you do it in the next sheet draft sheet okay here Okay, so what is that? This this function is a binomial with M and P. We have to maximize P, right? Uh, we have to like estimate the P with the data set as x i to x n, right? Yes, sir. So now we have to write the likelihood function, and the likelihood function would be out of M. I'm having for example, x. So out of m, having some sort of xi as the positive thing, and p. Every time, like for example, I'm in the first term for the x, I'll write what out of that m, five has got succeeded. So m c xi, p to the power xi, right? A one minus p to the power m minus xi, right? And so this we are doing the product of n times we are doing because this has been done n times, right? So we have been done this Bernoulli as n times. That okay. And now if we'll do the summation of all those things, so what we'll be having this constant every time we'll be getting this constant. This we can exclude because this will not impact because when we'll do the differentiation, it will get reduced right so now we are left with what p to the power xi so that p to the power xi every time we'll get p to the power x two here we'll get similarly we'll get till n so p to the power it will all will get some so p to the power xi right similarly one minus p and we'll get m here okay okay and we'll get one minus p to the power m minus xi here also right x2 will get but when we'll do the m minus xi plus m minus x2 okay we were doing the mistake here have you got the point what we were doing earlier the mistakes yeah yes we have to add up all the m's right sir m's also we get, should get added yeah, right yeah, yeah that was the mistake we were doing and i wrote here also it was a mistake so that's why that can be said now you'll differentiate you'll get the correct Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Because the m will come n times, so n minus yeah. m. M right? m n minus is sigma x i. Yeah. Okay. So have you got like everyone uh, got the point, right? Yes, sir. It's clear now. Yeah. Anything else? Like any other questions? So the activity question one there are couple of problems there. So if you could, I mean, I, I can get the answer, but I don't understand how it is coming. So if you could go through that as well, okay. it's the first activity. This one, right? Yeah. I mean, there are some problems below here. Yeah. 
Okay, so the first is clear, right? Because the sigma yeah. of the bivariate will be two cross two one. Yeah, that is yes, the uh, Jacobian. Yeah, matrix. even this is okay, sir. Okay. Yeah, from this onwards. So what I mean, sir, why follows a normal like this is uh, what you can say? Uh, we are showing this as a normal distribution. This is not a, that normal that we used usually uh, what you can show for the normal distribution. Is a combination of normal distribution. Why generally is a combination of normal distribution, and in that we were having we are having three features, and all these three features are having a normal distribution. So y one, y two, y three, and for y one, y two, y three, we are having three one four as a mean for this what you can say normal distribution, and six thirteen fourteen six thirteen four is the variance of that matrix, uh, variance of that normal distribution, but. The correlation between first and second, the first and normal distribution second is also been given here. Okay, so this is representing y one, y two, y three, and y one, y two, y three. This what this is simply the covariance of y one, y one, y one. This is covariance of y one, y two, y two, y two, and this is covariance of y three, y three. This is the covariance of y one, one two, and similarly uh, we can see here. Okay, and now C is been given such that. Z is so. This you can write like this also. So Z is simply the combination of C and Y. That means C is here. What you mean? Two. What is that? Uh, two minus one and three. Two minus one and three. And Y one, Y two, Y three. So Z is simply the combination of these three. So Z is what? Z is two Y one minus Y two and Y three. And now you have been Asked to say regarding this Z, you have to uh, the you have to tell regarding this Z the expected value, expectation of this Z, and the variance of this Z. Like you have to ask the mu and the sigma for this Z. Okay, so what you can do, you mean can be calculated directly because we are having the properties. But for the variance, you have to use that this matrix also to get the variance. So Z expectation of Z can be directly calculated with this two minus one and three with Y one you can multiply directly because we already know the expectation of X A plus B is what expectation of A plus expectation of B so expectation of Z can be calculated directly expectation of variance so, so of we Z directly take that matrix right mu three one yeah. four that yeah. uh, vector sorry yeah yeah this 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 you have to take for the No Are sir, you? for the uh, for finding out the expectation, we direct we can take mu, right? I mean y one when we have two x one two y one. Yeah, you can y2. take yeah, you can take mu. Mu, right, sir? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and you will okay. get the mu. Yeah. Similarly, you can calculate the variance also, and then you can just write whatever you have got the mu and the some uh, like the covariance, the variance, right? Sir, for the variance also, sir. Um, I mean when we have that equation of two y one and all. So in that we do the square and put the variances there. How do we? There do you will that? not get because there you are just getting because it's a combination of uh, three uh, normal yeah. distribution. Right? Yeah. There you will not get the variance will not get. Okay. Okay. So for so the we variance use the vector, to calculate, uh, you have to use the covariance matrix for all okay. those cases. Okay. Okay. Then sir. only you'll get the variance. Fine, sir. Okay. And the similar type of questions are there in the uh, what do you say graded and practice also. See this this week has lot of concept, but the thing is see we can't write or we can ask we can't ask in the mathematical equations and all because this will become a bit very difficult to solve also because all of these are not all of these are a bit conceptual like how do we do the clustering that you can't I can't ask I will uh, I can orally ask you yeah. Uh, how will you do that? How that algorithm and all will work? But we can't ask in the mathematical part. Say. That's why it's become a bit simple in the calculative part, but it's a very like consist of a lot of what you can say concept in this week. Okay. So does anybody is having any issue in activity questions? So I like the first first we have already discussed. So I don't think so in the first anybody will be having any this uh, problem. So two second also the second is pretty simple the method and all the second the method you are estimating this is maximum likelihood 
and this is a statement regarding the MLE and this is the likelihood function simply the product of all those functions and the Gaussian uh, mixture model also this is the first day. what yeah sir uh, in the uh, maximum likelihood why hmm. we are uh, i mean why we are taking minus negative sign in, uh, in uh, while calculating the maximum likelihood we are not taking see if you are taking minus that means you are minimizing that function if you are taking plus that means you are maximizing that function yes okay yes. so there is nothing uh, like if you take the in the ma ma machine learning generally what happens we generally take minus so that there are algorithms, there are optimization. This optimization problem can be solved. Like the minimizing anything can be solved. Maximize is a very bit harder problem. That's why generally we oh, take minus okay. and minimize that function. Okay, because the, like there it. are op yeah, there are optimization problems that can solve the minimization uh, problem, but maximization problem it becomes very hard to solve that. Manually Maybe. we can solve, but yeah. Maybe. So uh, we do uh, it is it because that uh, that uh, convex set like mainly we use convex set kind of uh, structure so for that uh, minimizing is easier and maximizing is of course tough. pretty hard yeah that that is the reason we are taking minus of it okay sir. and uh, in the lectures also professor has took i guess minus okay, okay. thanks yeah so in this also there is not much of any question the fourth also they are all uh, if somebody has seen the lecture, you can directly answer those this all five questions. And tutorial, if you'll go through the tutorial, I guess you'll be able to solve all the practice and graded. Uh, I don't think so. There is much issue in this. Okay, so yeah, you can ask if you are having any issue regarding this, anything else. Sir, can you please explain uh, question number uh, three of activity question four? Okay. Sorry, sir. Question number four of activity question four. See, the fourth one is what? If uh, convergence in uh, convergence in a probability means what? Similarly, if you see, if you have to calculate the probability, probability such that Xn and X, see here, this is very small, like right? this, this is very small, right? Yes. So whenever N will tends to infinity, so the Xn will what happen? If, if this will become, see, for example, if the Delta, this epsilon become very small and small. So that means what it will both will uh, converge toward each other. Xn will converge x x right. If X this this is this x. yeah this delta is very small like for example zero point zero 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 one, that yes. means x n will start converging to x if yes. the n will increase right. So the probability that uh, that it will the both will converge and it will equal to zero will be what one right. Have you got the point? See, last point, can you repeat that again? Last see, point. The probability that Xn will converge to X and both the Xn and X are very much uh, closer to each other, right? Yes, yes. So the probability of that happening will what? It will also converge to one? E e okay, yes, yes. Right. Yes. Thank you. Anything else? Anyone is having any issue? Anyone is having any issue like in any of the concept?
but i uh, or i said it incorrectly i guess i said it incorrectly right as the n will tends to infinity uh, the probability that xn will tends to n like both will become almost similar right sir according to the convergence theorem um, uh, probability for convergence theorem uh, the formula the, 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 Formula was given to us was x n minus mod of x n minus a greater than t. Okay, and if that is less than uh, t, then it will be zero. Uh, sorry, one. So and greater than t, it, then it will be zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is correct. Yeah, no, I said it correctly. Yeah. So uh, the thing is, uh, like for greater than t, as my t n is increasing, again that is converging and it is becoming. um it is like uh, can you please explain that uh, one second once more sir okay see so if xn is converging to x right yes. when when xn will converge to x when will take the limit right this this will happen right this will happen yes sir when this will happen if this if land tends to not this f if limit n tends to infinity the probability that this will be greater than some value this this xn minus x will be greater than some sort of value will B zero at n tends to infinity, right? So the okay. opposite part you can write it for this. Less than t will be equals to one, uh, uh, right? Yes. That you can write in the opposite sense. Yes. That is what has been asked in the question. Uh, okay, 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 okay. So as x t x x n is uh, uh, as n is tending towards uh, infinity, x n is Also becoming x, converging to x. So x n greater than any value will be become zero because x uh, then the mod value will give us zero. Yeah. Yeah. So that is uh, of course so uh, the probability of getting that is zero. And yeah, the opposite is uh, um, similarly the opposite is one. Okay. Okay. No, I understand. Sir. Mod value zero. I mean when uh, in the next case. I will get mod value zero. So mod value zero means it is the minimum of any any. It is minimum. It is the minimum of anything. Yeah. So you you would have you have read in the stats too. Like this one you would have read weak law of large number. Like yes sir yes sir. In that you would have read regarding x n will converge to that probability such that x n minus mu. uh less than some sort of epsilon is one right and if this is equals to this zero this if this is equals to uh, some sort of zero then it, it will equals to one this is a strong what you can say uh law of large numbers and this is weak law of large numbers this this equation has just came from there that xn that the uh, xn or the xn bar will converge to mu uh, right yes. if 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 this is very much lesser than the probability of that happening is one this mm -hmm. just came from that weak law of large number only okay 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 sir understood sir uh, any member a bit but i remember yes sir okay anything else you are having any so yeah so for the revision session how many like revision session do you want like can somebody say sir uh, just uh, i i mean i don't know about others but for me if you uh, do the um, uh, that uh, svd uh, sorry the single uh, yes sir single value discover decomposition week 5 right 
week 5 week 6 uh, whatever professor deduction part whatever he did if you do that line by line explaining okay so last time i took the revision session was that not helpful no, no that was helpful understanding a bit but what i am saying like if you just explain like what he is doing oh, okay okay so okay so for that revision session we'll take 5 and 6 4 5 6 week alone right that maybe oh, for two i mean okay if you... four is also okay five and six are the main things Yes, I mean four is also okay. Like if you want to take, then why will we? No, uh, so we have to take for whole like from one to twelve the revision session. But five and six we have to take it alone, right? Five and six, especially sir. Um, our request is if you can just, I mean, whatever steps he is doing in the deduction part, no, just mm -hmm. step by step explain like what what he is doing. Oh, okay, okay. So, but the intuition intuition part is clear, right? What we are, why we are doing the like, PCA and all, right? Let's say yes, sir. So let's say PCA. What we are doing, like we are um, uh, reducing the dimensions, and we are taking the taking those dimensions on which the variance is most. Uh, um, yeah, this, yeah. This we understood, sir. The okay. yes, sir, the concept behind the intuition, the motivation that we understood, but. the deduction part like how he is coming to that formula let's say the covariance matrix or the maximum variance how is how is getting that formula that part please explain uh, that part like the deduction of that uh, okay okay i'll do that i'll do that uh, so yeah so maybe we'll be having three sessions and that three session will be one will be from week 1 to 4 and one will be 5 6 and then one will be from 7 to 12 that is fine right three session three division session yes. okay i think by now most of us are able to solve like whatever you question you give we are mm. able to solve it but uh, so uh, what we are saying like if we understand the deduction part then uh, the how it is coming so it will be the concept will be more clear to us okay so we'll schedule like this and then Because seven to twelve will not take much time. Only five to six we have to allow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's me. Okay. That's so me. next week, like maybe in this week, one session will be there. Maybe on twenty sixth or Saturday, and then next week two session will be there. So I guess that that three session Saturday. will be fine, right? Saturday, sir. Uh, in uh, evening, sir. Then. Oh yeah, all the session will be in the evening. So yes. most probably. Yeah, because uh, uh, Saturday we have uh, practical dates. That's why. Okay, which test? Practical dates, sir. Like uh, uh, mine is in twenty seven, so there are a few dates in twenty uh, six also. I think. Which practical test? Okay, your college exam. No, sir. Uh, DBMS and all. Oh, okay, okay. DBMS. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, okay. Fine. Okay, so that is on Saturday. Okay, right. Okay, yes, then sir. we'll. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Three revisions this time, and anything else like uh, uh, and rest everything is fine, right? In the MLF, like you, you are not facing much issues. Only that week five and six, right? Yes, sir. Uh, week five and six also like that. Uh, we are able to solve the questions, but that okay, are, like uh, everyone is facing like. But the last session uh, happened. Somebody was asking the number of live session is less, and uh, people are not responding on the discourse. Uh, those issues has been raised. So discourse, so many of them are many of like people are coming and putting the uh, extra thread and all. So, so okay, so that is the issue for MLF, sir. Uh, are they saying this for MLF or uh, other subject? Like for other subject, I agree. For MLF, they told in the starting itself like one person uh, was asking. I don't know who who was that, but uh, he told regarding that number of live sessions are less. Like number of live sessions are not like less. It's already it's like nobody is coming and responding. Like I'm waiting for someone to come and respond, right? But uh, uh, and then uh, he was telling, oh, maybe regarding he be having issue in the. 
five, fifth, and sixth week only. Yes, sir. But the discourse, uh, everybody is like participating, and that is a good participation on the discourse. I don't know how his uh, somebody was raising that on the discourse. The answer has been uh, like the, his problem has not been answered. Uh, so uh, you can tag me directly, and maybe I'll, I'll answer you, or you can mail me also. There's no problem in that. Okay. So you were right, sir. Maybe this was a five C week five six complaint because most of the complaints came during that period only. Okay, okay, it's fine. Like now, I, I guess I took that session six week, so it was fine. I guess the geometrical intuition part, I guess, is very much clear to everyone, and only have to make a go through that each and every line that yes. I'll do in the division session. And I guess it. Okay, so somebody is asking regarding the week eleven and twelve. Uh, what you can say summarize session so that will do in the division session itself so don't worry about that and uh, one thing that like uh, in the previous session uh, in previous one of the session you said like uh, you are uh, uh, we can expect some some kind of complex question uh, for the uh, final exam so yeah a bit complex not all the questions but a bit complex, like you can expect like 40% of them are pretty simple, easy, you can say. And 40% uh, are a bit moderate and 20% are a bit uh, more, more than moderate, not hard, but a bit more than moderate, you can say. But 40 to 50% are pretty simple. I've seen the question, right? very simple questions. You can, you'll be able to solve. 40 questions are a bit moderate and 10 to 15, like out of 20, 25 questions, two, three questions will be there that uh, if you are skipping in the starting, that will be fine. In the end, you can solve that. That I'll, I'll prefer you to do that. So, so this 20%, we can expect this from week, yeah, this 11 and 12. Mm, uh, that uh, I'm not sure. I'm not like able to recall that, but I've, the overall question I'm saying about that. Because the last yeah. Because, sir, because sir, like uh, if you are le like let's say for PCA or SVD, there is um, uh, nowhere we can. I mean, you can. Get, I mean, if you want to co make the co uh, question more complex, you have to give her uh, give us more calculation. That's how it, the you... calculation part don't be that much. That uh, okay. I, I can assure you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then it's okay, sir. Then it's okay. Yeah, and one guy in the last two second also has got total marks. Like I guess, uh, I don't remember his uh, raw number, but uh, yeah, his marks was total like fifty out of fifty. He has got one student has got that. Sir, how? Uh, what was the average marks for quiz two, sir? Uh, it was pretty good. Like most of them, like eighty percent has passed this time in the second quiz. So the marks is pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you don't have any, like uh, any further issue, like we have discussed the activity also, practice also, if you're having any issue, you can ask, even in the grader also, if you're having, I can just tell you how to proceed that question. So if you're having any issue, you can ask otherwise. Yeah, one student has got that. Okay, so yeah, uh, if you're having any uh, doubt, you can ask. Otherwise, we'll close this session. Tomorrow also, we have the session regarding that solve with instructor. Uh, so you can come at two to four. We are having the session. If you're having any other, whoever has not seen can see the video today and can discuss tomorrow. We have again the session tomorrow from two to four. Anybody is having any issue, like any doubts? Sir, I have a doubt uh, in graded assignment 10. Okay. I'll just a moment, I just joined. Uh, so, in graded, give me a moment. The solution is not been uploaded for graded assignment 10. Yeah. It's uploaded, right? Solution, I have not checked. There was a question later to 
where it, the answer was 60 minus 16. Uh, just a moment. I'm just... Minus 16. Sorry, uh, I think it was like math. No. It was math. Post... Sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm mixing it. So it, it is oh, a math question. Okay, okay, okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, anybody else is having any issue? No issue. Anyone is that anybody is having any doubt? Nothing. We twelve said. Uh, I think we are all done. We have, okay. Yeah. Okay, then we'll meet tomorrow again for that solve with instructor. Okay. And uh, if you're having if you, uh, you're having any issue, you can ask me tomorrow also regarding any sort of doubts and all. So we'll close the session for today. Okay, is uh, it fine? We'll have one to four, like uh, one to four revision. Yeah. Sir, for end term, like uh, will there be like whole syllabus from week one to twelve, like equal weightage for everything? Uh, weightage, uh, I've told you, weightage is, is like 20 25 percent from week one to four, then 30 to 35 from week uh, five to eight, and then the rest 40 to 45 percent from the last four weeks. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, Abhishek, you were asking anything tomorrow session, like uh, one to four revision session, no, sir. Tomorrow is for week like 12, so with instructor. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Then it's so, so, okay. Yeah, that is left, right. So we'll be having solving. If you're having any issue in regarding any of the weeks, like 10, 11, you can ask me tomorrow itself. Oh, uh, okay. okay. Yes. Otherwise, we'll be having the session, revision session. We are planning like for three sessions. Uh, if, we, yeah, earlier we planned for three or, yeah, we'll plan for three sessions only because five and six weeks will be taken together. Okay, so okay then we uh, everybody bye. Okay, we'll thank you more. Yeah, thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you.